Nisambulo binaka, oya wane kama na langi, oni nandoro ngozi yao, maina ziwa kina ruwe na bisinga, maina moni iti kina boga rumbu, kaina Radio Fiji 1 na ndome ibiti bongani biya nyanu. Na maka talenga na bengo na sasi biya ni na tina kaloko na bimbongi ni buki lulu. Kena bima mani walu na bimbongi ni baka rowai, maina mbuza ni balu, ninge na maka. Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, i got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach lock-off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on The Ride, only on Gold FM. Tonight, another Nasese bus catches fire in Suva. Attack on taxi drivers on the rise. And use of the Masi motive in New York fashion raises eyebrows in Fiji. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. Another bus caught fire in Samambula Suva this afternoon. This Nasese bus had about 40 passengers on board when the fire started. However, the driver acted quickly and used the fire extinguisher to douse the flames before it could spread. When our cameras arrived at the scene, the National Fire Authority was already on site. Nasese bus owner Jack Kumar claims the fire started from the wiring of the e-ticketing console. Kumar claims the bus is working fine. Recent attacks on taxi drivers have seen the Fiji police force send out a warning. There have been two such attacks in the last 24 hours in the Greater Suva area, Vasita Kote Wasawasa reports. According to police, the new trend shows up to three men hiring taxis with ulterior motives, robbing the driver and stealing the taxi. Divisional Crime Officer Central ASP Moon Sami says the criminals usually target busy periods such as hibiscus. I'd like to tell the taxi drivers, uh, including the members of the public, uh, they, when they see any passengers, what they pick, the passengers, uh, the taxi drivers, they should be very cautious. 46-year-old Mani says while he loves his job, there's always the fear of being mugged. Mostly during the nights, a lot of people are out after drinking in the nightclubs. We need to be careful at night. That goes for all taxi drivers. Last night, two men hired a taxi from Center Point in Nambua, Suva, and drove away after pushing the driver out. In another incident, also last night, two men hired a taxi and beat up the driver near Nehru Primary School. They tied him up with a rope and left him at the back seat. The taxi was later found abandoned at G2 Estate. Krishna, who also works in Suva, says driving at night is risky business. Safety, we call, cannot guarantee safety. Only the public at large should think of the drivers. And we are always concerned of picking the right passengers. But at the end of the day, we are betrayed on the journey. Police are urging taxi drivers to be careful to drive to the nearest police station if they feel unsafe. Vasita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. The Pacific Island Development Forum will attend its first international meeting in September. Mikalonga reports the PIDF is already taking a stand for the Pacific on the international stage. The Pacific Islands Development Forum has been invited to the United Nations General Assembly in New York next month with a partner country already offering help. Timo Leste has offered to assist the General Secretary respond to an invitation that has been received that he'll attend the UN General Assembly meeting in September. Oh, yes. Peter Chamini Loma Loma says partnerships between the public and the private sectors and civil society groups from around the Pacific has given the PIDF the firepower to have regional issues addressed at international levels. This is the first time where we ourselves are creating our own space. Uh, we are not there as invited guests. We are there as owners of the space. And so we are going to determine the agenda going to determine the outcome, but we're doing it in partnership with our development partners. The forum's Green Trade Show last week has attracted potential investors. A renowned Japanese firm is interested in our seaweed and there were a lot of queries about our new bottled water. I'd like to mention here about YY, uh, which is a product that we in the Fiji should be very proud of. It's the world's only and first uh, water bottle uh, that is biodegradable. 
the new PIDF Secretariat based in Fiji should be fully operational in the next few weeks. Mikolonga, FBC News. The use of Ita K. Masi motifs by a fashion designer from New York in the United States has seen local artists questioning the protection intellectual property. As Apisalami Dokar reports, the Fiji Arts Council isn't happy with this latest development. This dress is the work of Nanette Lapore, a New York fashion designer. She's come under criticism on the internet for misnaming Fijian Masi designs as an Aztec dress. The Fiji Arts Council believes it's time to register our traditional designs as a toke intellectual property to avoid such incidents in the future. Our responsibility as a Fijian community is probably to register all our motifs from all confederacies, from all provinces, from all districts, from all uh, villages, I guess, uh, to, to every extent. Laive Koso says unless there is some legal backing, artists and Fiji as a whole is helpless to stop anyone. It's sort of discouraging that, uh, I guess, a, a renowned designer uh, Nanette uh, from New York, uh, I know she's making claims that it's very similar to the Aztec designs, but I think Fijians will know what belongs to them when they see something like that, and I think uh, their claim for us to do research is to make sure that we base our complaints on, on facts. The Fiji Arts Council is calling on the government and various stakeholders to work on protecting what is rightfully ours. This would be, I guess, the appropriate time for for the respective ministries that are in charge of this. I, am, I would probably suggest the Itoke Affairs um, Department of uh, National Heritage, Culture and Arts to be actively engaged in a, in a dialogue that to be able to um, to develop workshops or probably panels that would go into a very serious discussions to be able to safeguard this very thing that we're, that we're talking about. Nanette Lapore has since apologized on her Facebook page. Apisalome Doka, FBC News. Coming up, learning Fijian cuisine, tourists hooked onto cooking local dishes. Jaha ho pyaar ka basera, aur rishto ki khushbu, ohe aapka apna ghar sansar. Join me on Ghar Sansar, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. Only on Radio Fiji 2. Namaste, dosto. Mitchi Raftan se Maya Shnil Singh. Shamil ho jaiye hamare saath Monday to Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. Fiji is working on reducing its carbon footprint by managing carbon emissions in the aviation sector. Civil Aviation Minister Ayasaid Kayum, speaking at a workshop in Nandi, said a state action plan will report carbon reduction measures to meet international standards. Akusita Tale has more. Over the next two days, discussions at the Civil Aviation Authority will center on the development of state action plans that reduce carbon emissions in our aviation industries. More efficient operations, especially in terms of air traffic management, better infrastructure and positive market-based measures, in other words, economic incentives to reduce pollution. Syed Kayum says Fiji is at the front line when it comes to the dangers of climate change and we're doing our part in reducing carbon emissions. While Fiji is clearly not one of the big carbon polluters, we are nevertheless committed to making whatever contribution we can in this regard. Improving the environmental performance of aviation is a challenge we take very, very seriously. Fiji is also committed to adopting best international practices with help of the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore's expertise. As small island states, we must ensure that we are not sidelined in the bigger scheme of things and will benefit as much from the growth in this region. Aviation growth has a direct effect on our island economy, including spin-off effects on tourism and investments. Fiji Airways has recently purchased three brand new Airbus A330s with Rolls-Royce engines that reduce carbon emissions by 40%. Akosita Tale, FBC News.
Fiji needs to be more conducive to indirect investment, says ANZ Pacific Chief Executive Vishnu Mohan. He says Fiji has the potential to attract more investment. ANZ relocated its Pacific headquarters to Fiji last year, showing the bank's confidence in our business environment, the skill sets of Fijians and government support for the business community. Since the relocation, Mohan says they've been, they've had, they've been getting inquiries from Asian investors keen on Fiji. We're getting inquiries from potential investors, particularly in Asia, and we want to be able to invite them and tell them, come to Fiji, because it's a great country to do business in. It's an investor-friendly country, and we will help, help you to set up the business. Two friends driven by passion and love of Pacific cuisine have come up with Flavors of Fiji. Operating on Denarau Island in Nandi, the business teaches tourists how to make local dishes. Akusita Tale has more. Born and raised in Fiji, Melissa Rafe and Alona McElrath have been friends for 15 years. Their journey of discovery through authentic Fijian homestyle cooking has been the talk of the town. We both share a passion for Pacific cuisine. It's probably what our friendship has been bonded over over the years. We really identified a niche in the local market, something that we could contribute and give back to Fiji. Um, and the, the obvious solution was food. Taught to cook the Fijian way, guests will be shown the art of cooking traditional local cuisine and enjoy the dishes Fiji has to offer. Our cooking school uh, features a selection of Fijian Indian dishes as well as tropical sweets. We have eight courses in total where the guests actually come and they can learn how to cook them um, and basically uh, enjoy that for, for the three hours. Flavors of Fiji menus are changed daily, depending on the season, to ensure the freshest and refined organic produce available. Whatever's in season, Melissa and I will go to the market to buy, we'll set it up here, they can see what they're cooking with. Because we can't take them to the market, we try to bring the market to them. The modern purpose-built cooking facility is inspired by local sites, with each guest fully equipped with a cooking station. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Only two days to go before the country's biggest carnival, the Hibiscus Festival, kicks off in Suva. As Shireen Lanta reports, Albert Park is just about ready for a week of festivity. The Hibiscus stage is all set, Wogon Pavilion is almost complete, tents are up and the rides are being tightened into place. You can see behind me there's a Ferris wheel coming up, OHS team are uh, including the round, the uh, tents are going up, the safety team are here to ensure that uh, we once again provide a festival that uh, brings about uh, safety, that uh, brings about the excitement and that provides a, uh, an environment where people can enjoy themselves. Linga Gukisuva says despite a little rain, they expect the weather to be in their favour. 16 contestants will vie for the Miss Hibiscus crown with the 10 candidates in the King's category. Organizers are also promising some new programs. One is the B Money Wise uh, program that has been handled by Reserve Bank, uh, which is targeted at our uh, children on how they can utilize money and proper money financial planning. And the second one is the, uh, the Beto Wanga or the canoe racing, which will be happening at the Suba Foso on Friday. The theme for this year's festival is Pacific Wellness, Treasure Life, and Choose Health. Sharin Lata. FBC News. Jamie joins us now with sports and I hear that two of Fiji's biggest brands are joining forces. You heard right Jackie, Fiji Rugby teams up with Fiji Water for the upcoming International Sevens. Details on that up ahead and we also find out how Suva plans to take on its semi-finals of the Digital Cup. That and more after the break. Isambulu Binaka, Pedango Wadi Sun in the Lai, Namakim and was sending on a Borotak in a Lalina Cabi, Mina Tolukina Bitu, and a Moni digging a Porumbuka, and a Bula FM, Nabandu and a Serre. I wake up in the morning, I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are, a bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up?
Welcome back to FBC Sports. October will be an important month for Fiji rugby as an attempt will be made to convince international rugby board officials that we can host international tournaments. The FRU is already beaming with confidence after securing their latest sponsor for its IRB-sanctioned Fiji Water International Sevens, where 16 world-class teams will compete. Elena McDonald reports. <laughs> Finally, some light at the end of the tunnel to Fiji Rugby's financial troubles. Fiji Water, not usually associated with sports sponsorship, today signed up as the naming rights holders to the International Sevens that will be held at the ANZ Stadium in October. I think it's the beginning of, of many tournaments to come to Fiji. We've been crying for so long to, to get a centennial a, a IRB series leg in Fiji. But this would be as good as those leg. If we develop it more, we could attract the other big teams that are unable to come this year. Knowing top teams from Samoa, Australia, Kenya and the United States will be participating, FRU's latest sponsors knew this was an opportunity not to be missed. I think if you go around the world, there are two things that Fiji is known for. Uh, it's either you can tell them that you come from where Fiji water comes from or where Fiji sevens comes from. So I think uh, in that sense, uh, the two names uh, act as good ambassadors uh, for Fiji into the international arena. It's an undisclosed sponsorship sum that's solely for the two-day event. And if all goes well in two months' time, Two years from now, Fiji could become the latest hosting nation. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Suva will take a cautious approach against Nandi in Friday's Digital Cup semi-final at the ANZ Stadium. Even though the capital side has defeated the Jet Setters in season play, semi-final matchups introduce a whole new ball game. Elena McDonald checked out the latest at Suva's team training. Expect some new things within Suva's forward play on Friday night. While a young backline usually implies inexperience, the coaching panel believes that being unpredictable is the perfect fit for their latest strategies. And uh, now we think for them to, to find the combination with the food. Yeah? Yeah, that's the thing we want. Eh? A relentless forward pack is in the making for this semi-final clash. And it'll be up to a certain linking duo to ensure phase plays are followed to the letter. And the other things, you know, uh, our rucks, eh, most. When it comes to the same funds, we want perfect things, eh? But this is, you know, it's hard eh, to do that, eh? But we want to find it, we want to find the target, eh? Come ready. Former kicker Ben Sosos played an instrumental role in tactical plays to use for every situation. But... It'll all come down to decision-making on the day. Yes, we expect a tough game, you know, a Bruno based team, eh? And with a good coach like Tenula in there. So they'll be having something ready for us, you know. Suva believes they've covered all aspects, and they're definitely showing signs of a team that's ready to send Nandi packing this weekend. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. In the Mobile Battle of the Giants on Friday, it's going to be a must-win situation fallout Toka against Lambasa if they are to feature in the semi-finals. Interesting with more. Support of Pranil Naidu, Naidu from that far touch. The Lotoka football side needs nothing less than a win to ensure it features in the semi-final of the Ink Mobile Battle of the Giants. Having put pressure on themselves, the Blues Brigade know what needs to be done to make it into the last four. We understand that uh, we were bundled out, out of the Vodafone Fiji effect. But we would like to secure our win against Lambasa to secure our spots for the semi-final. And we are working very hard in preparation for the match against Lambasa. As we know, Lambasa is a very formidable side and they can do anything in the 90 minutes of soccer and they are the best team so far as witnessed. However, there is some concern for the Lotoka coaching staff. This, as one of the key players, is down with injury. A disadvantage into the team is that uh, one of our import players from Vanuatu, John Kartak, is injured. The physio is working uh, on him. Hopefully he gets a green light by Friday to feature against uh, Lambasa. The Fiji effect was a near miss for the side, but they don't want a repeat of that, this time around in Bar. If the Westerners feature in the last four remains to be seen and will only be known on Friday afternoon. Interesting. FBC Sports.
Meanwhile, Lombasa, after two wins at the BOG, is looking at breaking its Western drought. The Bahamasing Lions have never won a major title on Western soil, but they are going in confident. Confidence, confidence and just play without pressure. And these boys are brilliant ball players, and without any pressure, I tell you, they're going to create miracles for this team. The BOG resumes Friday at Basgovin Park and ends on Sunday. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. Former Vodafone Fiji Chief Technology Officer Raj Deo has been appointed Acting Chief Executive of B-Mobile, Papua New Guinea's mobile telecommunications company. Deo's appointment was announced by B-Mobile Limited Chairman Sid Yates this week. Deo started at his new role on Monday, and he is entering at a time when the company is negotiating with Independent Public Business Corporation to increase IBPC shareholding in B-Mobile. According to Yates, they hope to increase PNG's investment and control of this important company. Yates said Fiji National Provident Fund has withdrawn from its proposed investment in B-Mobile, and as a result, Vodafone Fiji will not be contracted to provide management services. Last week, FMPF Chairman Ajit Korogoda said the B-Mobile share subscription agreement was not completed. Korogoda said certain conditions critical to the achievement of the business plan projections were not met. Weather time now, so Jen, any more interesting stories? Not tonight, but you'll have to watch this space, Jackie. Better weather today than what was earlier forecast. It may have rained here in Suva and the Hidden Paradise, but at least everyone living along the western side and Lombasa got to enjoy nice sunny conditions. Looking at the chart, only two major centers were in the 20s today. The lowest temperature was 27 degrees here in Suva. Nandi and Lombasa, on the other hand, had a slightly hotter day than everyone else at 32. We can expect pretty much the same weather tomorrow that we had today, fine all throughout with rain and clouds in Suva and Savasavu. We'll also have sun in the west and Lombasa. Now, Sovi Basin is the last remaining expanse of virgin lowland forest. It's also home to many rare species found nowhere else in the world. Thank you, Arietta Mataravaravu, who took us on this picturesque journey to the interior of Naitasiri. What do you think, Jackie? Absolutely beautiful. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. The headlines again. Another bus caught fine Samambula, Suva this afternoon, but quick action by the driver prevented major damage. Police have issued a warning to taxi drivers after a series of attacks, and Fiji works on reducing carbon emissions. To this week's poll question, and we're asking, who should be held responsible for the latest rugby protests? FRU, unions or teachers? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's news tonight. Until tomorrow, good night. Suraj ki pahli kiran ke saad din ki shuruat ki jye. Subha ka mangal prabhat aap ko shub ho. Subha subha ho khushiyo ka mila. Na logo ki parva, na dunia ka jamila. Panchiyo ka sangeet ho aur mausam albela. Mubarak ho aap ko ye khub surat sabira. Har so mwara se lekar shukrwar tak. Subha chhe se lekar nao vaj tak. Shamil rahe Radio Fiji 2 par hum safar mein. Ravin Singh ke saad. Nimbula, methango nimilote na isarotumboa. Nama kia umina rua kinaona na vya kavi moni te kina wakarombuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vipaka baro takini nreko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai nama kia kina.